In this problem, we're told what is the resultant force exerted by the two cables supporting the traffic light in this figure? And then B, what is the weight of the light? So this right here is the diagram, right? We have this traffic light being held up by these two cables, which are have a tension of like 60 newtons, right? And we know that they have an angle, right, relative to the top of 45 degrees each. So let's just go ahead and start with A. So for A, we're trying to find the resultant force exerted by the two cables supporting the traffic light. So the way I want you to think about this is in X and Y components. So if we imagine this right here is the Y axis, right, as a, like a normal X and Y axis, right, and then this is the X axis. The only thing that's going to be supporting this traffic light are the Y, uh, the y components of these tension forces, right? And the reason is, is because the X doesn't hold it up, right, because we only have a force MG in the Y, so it's going to be having to hold up this force MG, right? So we know essentially the Y components of both of these, right, because there's two different tension forces are going to be holding it up, right, MG. So what we need to do is if we're trying to find the resultant force, we have to find the Y component of this one and the Y component of this one, right? Because that's going to be what's actually holding it up. So how do we do that? So what we do is by taking the sum of the forces in the Y direction, right? So the sum of the forces in the Y, what are they equal to? So since it's not moving, this is a stationary object, we know force equals MA. So if not moving, if it's not moving, then acceleration is zero, meaning the sum of the forces just equals zero. So you say zero equals, and then we have to add up the forces. So we actually have to find the y component of these tension forces, right? So the way you like to, or the way to imagine it is like a triangle. So if I have a triangle like this, right? Imagine this is our triangle. So we've got our triangle, right? And this triangle is essentially this thing right here, right? Because it looks like a triangle, right? So we know the angle of our triangle right here is 45 degrees, okay? So this is 45 degrees, and what we're trying to do is find this side, right? And this side is opposite to the angle, okay? So on our triangle, opposite to the triangle is right here, and I'm going to call it y, just labeling it a variable. That's what we're trying to find. And so we also know the hypotenuse right here, right? This is the hypotenuse, is 60 newtons, right? The tension force is just 60 newtons. So we solve for y by using trig. So you know the sine of an angle, right? 45 degrees is equal to what? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, right? So the opposite side is y, and the hypotenuse is 60. So if we use the y over 60, right, multiply both sides by 60, we find y, which is going to be the vertical component of this tension force, which is exactly what we wanted, right? So we know it's going to be 60 times the sine of 45 for one of them, right? But keep in mind they're identical. Both are 60 newtons and they have an angle of 45 degrees, meaning the thing holding it up, right, the, the y axis of this is 60 times the sine of, or two times the 60 of sine of 45, right? Because there's two of them. So essentially, fy is going to be 60 times the sine of 45. We're just adding the forces in the y direction, right? That's this one. And then we have to add it again right, for this one too, 60 times the sine of 45. Right? And if we add them up, right, 60 plus 60 is 120, so 120 times the sine of 45, right, so the sine of 45, right, and so keep in mind, this right here is going to be uh, the force, right, so this number right here is the force being held on. So the force, right, is just equal to this number, right, so I know I said it equal to zero, but really it's not zero because the sum of the force is just going to be equal, is essentially what's holding this up. So really, the force is just going to be 120 times the sine of 45, right? So 120 times the sine of 45. If you go ahead and plug that in, right? You're going to get 84.85. Uh, 84.85. You can round however you want. So you can say 84.9, and then it's going to be newtons, right? Because that makes sense. If we have a vertical component, that's going to be the only thing holding this up, right? Because we don't think about the x when you just uh, are holding something up, right? So we know 84.9 is what's holding up this traffic light. So 84.9 is going to be your answer to A, so the resultant force exerted by the two cables supporting the traffic light. Now let's do B. So for B, we're trying to find the weight of the light. And so what is weight? So when we talk about weight, essentially it's just mg. We're talking about the weight force, which is this force right here, mg. But think about how this works, right? 84.9 is going to be the forces holding it up, right? And if the forces holding it up are 84.9, that means it's going to be nullifying it so it's in place, right? So that means mg also has to be equal to 84.9. Because let's say one of them was greater, it would cause it to move because the forces want to be equal. Because, but since the forces are equal, it's in place. So we know 84.9 is just equal to mg. And mg is just the weight force. So the weight of the light is just the same as uh, our answer to A. So really, they have the same exact answers. right? So 84.9 newtons is going to be the weight force. But make sure you also specify for A, or for this part, I forgot to include, that it's actually upwards. right? So since it's positive, it means it's going upwards, which makes sense, right? Because uh, these tension forces are upwards. So this force is also being exerted upwards. And since it's holding it up, it's got to be upwards. So 84.9 newtons are basically your answers for both of them. But yeah, so these are your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.